So now as we continue our journey through the cell cycle, we've established interphase. Interphase was the majority of the cell cycle. About 90% of the cell cycle is devoted to interphase. Interphase consists of things like G1, where there's tons of metabolic activity and cell doing its normal cell functions. And then we have S phase. S phase was synthesis duplicating the DNA and making sure we have enough DNA when we split the cell completely. And then there was the G2 phase. The G2 phase was another growth phase. Uh, specifically, we focused on the centrosomes duplicating as well. Now we can finally get into sort of the nitty-gritty, the 10% that is most often seen in almost every biology course. This is known as the M phase now of the cell cycle. So we'll call this next flowchart M phase. And this M phase is otherwise just simply referred to as the mitotic phase. And this is about 10% of the cell cycle. So we had 90% devoted to interphase. Now M phase will be the other 10%. First thing that we're going to be talking about, remember, M phase consists of both mitosis and cytokinesis. We're going to be first covering mitosis. And we'll do a very short overview of the process of mitosis itself. Mitosis is the idea of nuclear division. What we mean by this is that we double DNA for a reason. We double it so that we can split it in half equally amongst two daughter cells so that we can have somatic cell division. We create somatic cell, cell division. We do somatic cell division so that we can do the cell cycle, so that we can create cells from other cells. That's what my, mitosis is all about, and it specifically focuses on nu nuclear division of somatic cell division. But somatic cell division then does not cover which cells. That does not cover cell division of sex cells, so not sex cells. And another way to say sex cells are gametes. Things like sperm and egg do not undergo mitosis. Make sure you understand that. There's a whole other lecture devoted to what they do, we all know that as meiosis, which we'll get into um, in future lecture. And of course, um, another, one final thing is that mitosis is a continuous process. It's a continuous five-stage process um, that does not just sort of um, stop and go, stop and go. It's happening all the time and always happening in almost every single cell that undergoes cell division. It's not just a phase in which we, you know, specifically wait for one phase and then the next phase started. It's a very continuous fluid process consisting of five stages. And those five stages are as follows. Prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. We've all heard of this before. Um, you can sort of abbreviate it and sort of remember it as PPMAT, like this, um, or PPMAT, some people call it, whatever. So it's prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. In this uh, first M phase flowchart, we're actually just going to be looking at prophase and prometaphase. Um, so we'll start off with the first phase, prophase. And think about the name itself, number one, prophase. This pro means what? Pro means first or early, and this is the first phase, and that's why it's called prophase. Specifically, what I want to focus on are the chromosomes, or the genetic material, let's say. What about the chromosomes? In early prophase, they are actually still at the chromosome uh, chromatin shape. They are still chromatin. So we're going to write down um, still chromatin. They are not in a chromosome structure yet. They are still in that thread-like, very disorganized, dispersed structure. They are not in that highly organized, condensed, and coiled chromosome structure just yet. So early prophase, still chromatin. In addition, um, what we now start to see is that they begin to condense. They begin to condense in prophase. They begin to become that chromosome structure. Um, what we mean by this is that this is when they begin to coil and sort of uh, become a little more organized. They get shorter and thicker. The genetic material gets shorter and also thicker. It becomes more easy to see, because remember, chromosome meant colored body, a body that you can see underneath a microscope very easily, and this is what's happening. And then, of course, because of this, just like I mentioned right now, they become more visible. And then eventually when we get to, let's say, late prophase, this is something you should definitely, definitely know. This is when we finally see the clear classic chromosome structure. So clear classic chromo structure. And what do we mean by that clear classic chromosome structure? We've talked about this before. It sort of just looks like this X shape like this with a centromere right over here. That's that clear classic structure of uh, chromosome. Remember, early on in prophase, it's still chromatin, still in that crazy dispersed state, sort of like this. And then eventually it condenses, coils, shortens, thickens, and becomes visible into this nice clear classic chromosome structure that we're so used to.
In addition, during prophase, we have another process known as the mitotic spindle formation, further formation of the mitotic spindle. So mitotic spindle formation. We've sort of talked about this in the previous phase. In G2, we had the centrosomes and specifically the centrioles duplicating. We're going to have further modification of that mitotic spindle, the sort of ropes that are going to attach onto this um, kinetic core. Remember the kinetic core protein? They're going to attach onto that structure and pull those sister chromatids apart. So during this part of prophase, what we're going to be happening is what's going to be happening is we're creating these spindles and these spindles are specifically created because that's what's going to separate um, the spindles uh, are responsible for separating the chromosome during uh, anaphase specifically so that's why we're creating them we're creating the spindles so that we can separate the chromosomes eventually um, this is done through the process of microtubules microtubules do a very good job of this separation but it's important to understand how my tu microtubules function microtubules are simply now we can finally define them more specifically as hollow rods of tubulin and tubulin is simply a protein so microtubules consist of tubulin. Tubulin subunits make up microtubules. Tubulin itself is a dimer. It's a two-part protein that has both an alpha and a beta. A beta tubulin and alpha tubulin make up one microtubule, let's say. What we imagine is that this process, the tubulin itself, elongates. The microtubules elongates um, and the, they elongate via this process known as polymerization. Remember polymers? Polymers are the collection of subunits combining together. This is polymerization, making a polymer, a bunch of subunits coming together. This is how we, we create a microtubule. We add subunits, we would say. And then we also have the opposite, in which they don't elongate. The microtubule doesn't elongate, but actually shortens. We can actually shorten a microtubule, and this will play a very important role in this process of separating chromosomes during anaphase. They shorten, or it shortens via, and the process is just simply known as depolymerization. So I'll just write depoly. So if you want to build a microtubule, you polymerize. If you want to break it down, you depolymerize. Tubulin is the basic subunit that a microtubule is consistent of. And then specifically, what we want to mention about the microtubule, um, one last thing we want to mention is that centrosome itself, the centrosomes, um, actually are going to be moving to opposite sides. What we mean by this is that, um, I sort of talked about this in our previous video, if we have a cell and we have a centrosome region, remember it's two centrioles in a right angle like this, the same thing is going to happen on the other side of the cell. Because why? Because you need to have the pulling of the chromosomes on both sides. We need to have the pulling happen on one side like this, and also happen on the other side like this. Those lines that I'm drawing out, those are the mitotic spindles. Those are the microtubules, the hollow rods of tubulin that will form and then eventually bind to the kinetic core of the chromosome that was condensed very nicely during prophase. So that covers prophase. The number one thing I think you should know is that we have an early prophase, normal chromatin, but then in late prophase we get this classic structure. And then also during mitotic spindle formation, definitely know this process right here. You have the centrosomes separating, going to opposite sides in preparation for the pulling apart that we'll notice later on. And then lastly, we'll conclude this video by talking about step two, which is pro-metaphase. So what you can do is break down this word. Pro means first or early metaphase. Metaphase in it of itself is its own phase right here. That's where the M stands for. So this is the phase right before metaphase. That's why it's called pro-metaphase. Remember how we mentioned that in G2 the nuclear envelope was still there? Guess what happens in pro-metaphase? The nuclear envelope actually breaks down. So we'll write that down. Nuclear envelope breaks down. And it breaks down because now we actually have to have the, um, cell, the, the specific genetic material chromosomes set, get out of the nucleus and go into the center because we have to get metaphase um, to start. And we have to start up metaphase by breaking that sort of barrier that's stopping the chromosomes from leaving the nucleus. We break that barrier during pro-metaphase. In addition, the nucleolus in this um, phase is going to actually shrink away. So we're basically losing a lot of the structure that's um, keeping everything safe inside the nucleus. We're actually um, shrinking away the nucleolus 
In addition, the mitotic spindle continues to grow even more. Mitotic spindle continues growth. Shows you the importance of the mitotic spindle. These microtubule fibers, these fibers that are going to be connecting to the chromosomes, they require a lot of energy. They require a lot of sort of investment from the cell to develop into the perfect structures that way they will hopefully become. And then finally, what we're going to have in this um, final part of prometaphase is that the spindle microtubules, spindle microtubules, and remember, microtubules are what? They are the extensions that come out from the mitotic spindle, which is basically the centrosome, which consists of two centrioles. These spindles that are pulling, that are coming out as microtubules are hollow, tots, hollow rods of tubulin. Let's not forget that. So the spindle microtubules actually now extend across cytoplasm, like how, how I drew over here. Extend across cytoplasm. And they're doing this extension for a very specific reason, because they are then now supposed to attach to a certain part of the chromosome. What part do they attach to? This elongated extension, there's going to be a mitotic spindle, boom, attaches right here. Another mitotic spindle is going to come in, attach right there. That attachment is at the kinetochore. So they attach at, let's write, kinetochore. And once we've attached at the kinetochore, this is what's going to be known as kinetochore. They're attached via kinetochore microtubules specifically. Kinetochore microtubules are, are specific microtubules designated to attach at kinetochores. Very simple. The name is exactly what it means. There are also going to be some of these microtubules that we drew down here that are not going to attach at the kinetochores. They're actually going to involve themselves in a separate job. We don't need to focus on that. What we just need to understand is that there are kinetochore microtubules and the other ones are just called non-kinetochore um, microtubules. Most importantly, understand that the ones that are going to be involved in separating the chromosomes are the ones that are going to attach at the kinetic cores, and then when they attach to the kinetic cores, they're going to pull apart. And we're going to see that pull apart, or start seeing it, um, in the next flow chart. So overall, the first M phase, the first part of M phase, we've covered mitosis. The idea that mitosis happens as a nuclear division of somatic cell division. It doesn't happen in sex cells, and it's a continuous five-stage process. We establish prophase as the early phase, as the first phase, and then prometaphase we concluded with this idea that the chromosomes are going to be now finally leaving that structured nucleus because the envelope breaks, the nucleolus goes away, and then we're starting metaphase, which we'll get into in the next video.